Welcome back to my channel. If you are a new visitor here, you're also highly welcome. In this lecture, we'll be looking at the two formats of presentations that retroperitoneal organs can take. So for retroperitoneal organs, they can either be a primary retroperitoneal organ or secondary retroperitoneal organ. So this lecture will be unfolding the basis behind primary and secondary retroperitoneal presentations. <laughs> So what we know generally is that organs can either be of intraperitoneal presentation or retroperitoneal presentation. For intraperitoneal presentation, it means that the organ is embedded within the peritoneum. So let's say this is the configuration of the organ here, and you have the peritoneum lining the entire surface of this organ. And this is what is highlighted here in red. At the end, you now have the emergence of the mesentery. So if you look at the end of the lining here, you have the emergence of the mesentery. So it is this mesentery that then connects this organ to the body wall. And this is what is highlighted here in blue. So you have the organ here and you have the mesentery covering or wrapping around the organ. Then at the end, you now have the emergence of the mesentery, which now connects to the body wall. So you now see that the organ is connected to the body wall through the mesentery. And this is why intraperitoneal organs are mobile. So you see the organs and you have the mesentery, so they are able to move at will. But also to add that the length of the mesentery also determine the grade of movement. So the longer the mesentery, the higher the grade of movement, while the shorter the mesentery, the shorter the grade of movement. And also you have a retroperitoneal presentation, which means that the organ is located B and the peritoneum. So let's say this is the peritoneum here, elected in red. You now have the organ located behind it. You can see that this organ is positioned at the posterior part of this peritoneum, which is highlighted here in red. You now have the peritoneum holding this organ to the body wall. And this is the body wall here, highlighted in dotted blue. And this kind of presentation will prevent the movement of retroperitoneal organ. And that is why we say that retroperitoneal organs are immobile. So they are immobile because this organ is held in place onto the body wall. So this is the body wall, the organ is in between. I have the peritoneum lining the anterior surface and helping to hold it in place, thereby preventing this organ from moving. So this is the basis in terms of movement. The intraperitoneal organs are able to move just because of the emergence of the mesentery that helps to allow the movement. But for retroperitoneal organ, because they are held in place onto the body wall, because they are located behind the peritoneum, so they are not able to move. So for retroperitoneal organ, it can either be a primary retroperitoneal organ or a secondary retroperitoneal organ. So let's see what this entails. Primary retroperitoneal organs, they are seen to develop and remain behind the parietal peritoneum. So let's say this is the parietal peritoneum. We know that retroperitoneal organs are seen to be located posterior behind the peritoneum. So this organ is located behind it. And this is the kind of presentation that retroperitoneal organs present. But for primary retroperitoneal organs during embryogenesis or developmental process, this organ is seen to be located and developed at the posterior part of the peritoneum. And they also remain at this point, even after the developmental process. So the development of this organ, this is how it begins and this is how it ends. So there is no form of movement in terms of peritoneal relations to this organ. So they develop behind the peritoneum and this is where they remain even after that process. So this kind of presentation is called a primary retroperitoneal presentation. And where you see this kind of presentation, is in the adrenal glands, the kidney, the ureter, and also the rectum. So these organs are seen to present primary retroperitoneal presentation. A secondary retroperitoneal presentation is different. For secondary retroperitoneal organs, they were initially seen 
as intraperitoneal organs, which means that they were seen to be embedded or enclosed by peritoneum. And this is the kind of presentation that is seen here. Let's say this region here, highlighted in red, is the body wall. So you have the organ here, highlighted in green, and you see the peritoneum covering or encircling the organ. And when it does this, you are going to see the emergence of mesentery at this end. It is this mesentery that will then be connecting this organ that is highlighted in green to the body wall. So this kind of presentation is an intraperitoneal presentation. But as development proceeds, during the developmental process, this organ will then be seen to be pushed to the side of the body wall. And this is the kind of presentation here. You see this organ here highlighted in green is located around the space and enclosed by peritoneum. This organ will then be pushed towards the side and as it is being pushed towards the side, the peritoneum covering it also will move along with it. And this is why you see that the peritoneum lining would only be covering the lateral and the anterior surfaces. And of course, we'll be holding this organ to the posterior wall. And this kind of presentation, of course, is what we described in our retroperitoneal presentation. But this is at the later stage. So you see that the initial stage, this organ is suspended within the peritoneum during embryogenesis. Then as development proceeds, there's going to be the translocation of this organ where it is being pushed to the side of the body wall. And of course, the peritoneum will follow along with it. And this kind of presentation is what will be exhibited, where you have the peritoneum, then holding the organs of the body wall. And this is a retroperitoneal kind of presentation. So for secondary retroperitoneal organs, Initially, during embryogenesis, they are seen to be of intraperitoneal presentation, but as development proceeds, there's going to be the transformation of intraperitoneal presentation to a retroperitoneal presentation. And this is called a secondary retroperitoneal presentation because they were initially not even retroperitoneal, but at the secondary stage is when they begin to exhibit this retroperitoneal presentation. So they are secondary retroperitoneal presentation. Also using this image up here, this is the organ here highlighted in blue. So you have the peritoneum now lining the lateral and the anterior surface of this organ. And this is what is highlighted here in black because it's been pushed to the side. And of course, the peritoneum will follow along with it, helping to hold this organ to the body wall. You see this organ being pushed to the side as presented in this image. So you have the body wall here highlighted in red. You have this organ here and of course located behind the peritoneum, and that is why it is a retroperitoneal presentation. But this organ, because at the initial stage, it presents an intraperitoneal presentation before it is being transformed during embryogenesis into a retroperitoneal presentation. So this is what is presented here up in this image. And the organs that are seen to exhibit secondary retroperitoneal presentations include the pancreas, specifically the head, neck, and body of the pancreas. The tail of the pancreas is of intraperitoneal presentation. Also the duodenum, except the initial segment of the duodenum. We know that the initial two centimeters of the duodenum is of intraperitoneal presentation why the remaining is of retroperitoneal presentation, but specifically it is of secondary retroperitoneal presentation. We also have the ascending and the descending colon. These two subregions of the large intestine are also of secondary retroperitoneal presentation. So it's good for us to be able to highlight what extraperitoneal organs are. Extraperitoneal is a generic name for organs that are located outside the peritoneum. We know that organs can be located within the peritoneum, whereby all the surfaces are seen to be lined by peritoneum. And that kind of presentation is intraperitoneal presentation. So when they are seen to be located outside, they are extraperitoneal presentation. So you have organs here highlighted here, where it is located within or suspended within the peritoneum. So this is an intraperitoneal organ. So when you see organs that are located outside the peritoneum, which means that they can either be located behind it, they can be located in front of it, and they can also be located inferior to it. So it depends on the region. So the specific position 
outside the peritoneum will not be given specific name. So when you have organs that are located behind the peritoneum, they are called retroperitoneal organs because retro means behind. This is the organ here highlighted in blue. And we have the peritoneum here highlighted in black because it is located outside it, but specifically it is located behind it. Then it is a retroperitoneal organ. Then if it is located inferior to the peritoneum or inferior to the region where we have peritoneal reflection, is a subperitoneal organ, which means that it is located below the peritoneum. And a very good example of organ that is located below peritoneal reflection is the urinary bladder. So you have urinary bladder as a subperitoneal organ because it is located below the region where we have peritoneal covering. Then we can also have organs that are located anterior to the peritoneum, and these are called preperitoneal organs. So depending on specific regions where these organs are located, in as much as they are outside the peritoneum, they are referred to as extraperitoneal organs. But when they are located within it, it means they are suspended within it and you have all their surfaces being light by peritoneum, they are intraperitoneal organs. So it's good for us to also be able to establish what this means. So thanks for watching this video. Let's meet again.